Once again, back to that discussion on the personal computer with Greg Dorado and also the president of Chromemco Incorporated, Dr. Harry Garland. Gentlemen. Thank you, Scott. Again, we're talking about personal computers, and we're talking with Dr. Harry Garland of Chromenco Incorporated, which is based in California. Doctor, can you briefly tell me about Chromenco? How long has it been a company and uh, its basic background? Well, we were founded in uh, 1975, Greg, by myself and uh, Dr. Roger Mellon. Uh, in fact, while well, we were both on the faculty at uh, Stanford University. And uh, since then, we've uh, grown very, very rapidly. In fact, uh, Inc. Magazine uh, did a study of the fastest growing privately held companies in the United States and uh, came up with a list called the Inc. Uh, Private 100. And we were number seven on that list, so we feel very good about that. We uh, manufacture very high quality, highly reliable microcomputer systems, and we have an installed base of over 35,000 systems. It, well, you'd be hard pressed to find a, an industry which is more competitive than computer manufacturing right now. Uh, you must have had a great deal of fears when you entered into that. Uh, what ideas did you have, for instance, that weren't being already produced by Apple and IBM and all the rest? Well, what we have done is uh, positioned ourselves into the, the high quality, high performance uh, end of the marketplace. We do not appeal to the, the consumer uh, or to the children who want to play games on the computer, but rather to the professional market. Okay. In just a few seconds, we'll be going to some graphics that you have, so we'll probably want to have that set up in just a few seconds. Again, as far as the price range, I've mentioned in the earlier interview that we can start at $1,000, or rather $100. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Sinclair is producing that, uh, and they've got a singer name on, <clears throat> on front of it, on, on top of it. Uh, and you've mentioned that, that the cost for a personal computer can go up to, I believe you said, $5,000. At what point, from $5,000 beyond, uh, at what point do you make that change? Do you have to decide, as a businessman, that the under $5,000 category simply isn't enough for your needs? Yeah. Uh, again, it, it often comes back to what you want to do with that computer. And uh, often, large businesses can use a number of small computers in, applic in, in applications very well. And maybe a smaller business may even need a larger computer because they, uh, say, deal with a large number of different types of inventory items, even though perhaps uh, there's not a whole lot of value in, in those inventory items. So it depends very much on the business. Doctor, I mentioned the graphics. Why don't we go to those graphics now? And if you would, please uh, explain what we're seeing. Good. What we have here is a formula that we have come up with to bring what we think is some clarification to a very confusing issue in the personal computer uh, marketplace, namely, how much performance does a personal computer have when you buy it? How do you select what personal computer you want to buy? And uh, this is named after my colleague, uh, Roger Mellon, who uh, took three factors, namely the random memory capacity, the random access memory of the machine, which simply is how much capacity the machine itself has, multiply that times the number of characters on the display, on the display console that you see, and then multiply that times the disk storage capacity. Now, if you take those three factors and multiply them together, normalizing them uh, to uh, where you have the floppy disk capacity, divide that by 100K, and what that means is for every 50 pages you want to store, it takes 100K bytes of storage space. Uh, similarly, normalizing the characters on the display by dividing it by 2,000 and the RAM capacity by dividing it by 64K. This gets you a single number called the M factor, which is a measure of the total capacity or performance of that personal computer. Now, the second chart shows for several sample personal computers that performance factor or that figure of merit plotted as a function of price. And as you see, in general, as you go from $1,000 up to the $5,000 or $6,000 range, the figure of merit increases. So as you'd expect, as you pay more, you get more. But there is quite a bit of spread, and so it's important for a person who's buying a personal computer to take a look at those performance factors, compare the price, and make sure he's getting his money's worth. I think one element that I would be concerned with personally would be reliability, which, and I didn't see that in any mm -hmm. of the graphs. How does one determine the reliability of the machine. Obviously, if I've invested money and I have important facts and figures in that machine and I want them retrieved when I want them, how does one determine if indeed that machine will hold up uh, this month, next month, and the coming years? Yeah. The, the, the issue of reliability uh, is often best answered by the reputation of the manufacturer. Uh, for example, a survey was done by Image Resources, which is a marketing a, a survey house, uh, of the reliability of various microcomputer systems. And, and we were quite pleased that Kremenko came out number one in that uh, survey. 
Doctor, I'm going to play devil's advocate. What would you say to those people that say, well, I'm thinking of buying a personal computer, but the state of the art is changing so quickly, I'm just going to wait a bit. Uh, they keep on expanding the memory of these units. The price is going down. Maybe I'll sit out for another two years. How do you counter that type of, uh, of uh, debate and logic? Well, that question comes up, Greg, and it turns out the underlying technology is changing. And it is going to continue to change, not only for the next two years, but for the next 10 and 20 years, because the underlying integrated circuits are becoming more and more capable. The net result is certainly a person can wait. But in the meanwhile, they, they lose a lot of opportunity to increase their productivity. And often this goes to increased profits by not making use of a machine today. So true, better machines and lower cost machines will be coming. But if you don't use them today, you're missing an opportunity. We were talking about the future. What do you see, what will the personal computer be like in five to 10 to 15 years? What will I be able to purchase, let's say 10 years from now, that I can't buy now? Well, it's an interesting thing. Uh, uh, again, coming back to that integrated circuit technology, which is the foundation of the personal computer. Uh, if you take a look at the uh, beginning of, uh, of uh, the, the 80s, we were not able to put 100,000 transistors on a chip. It turns out that we can do that now, and in fact, by uh, the end of this decade, by 1989, we will be able to put a million transistors on a single integrated circuit, one single solid chip of silicon. And a personal computer has roughly a million transistors in it. So what we're saying is by the end of the decade, we should be able to reduce all of the electronics of a personal computer to a single chip. Now your company, Chromenko, is uh, an American company, obviously, and I would assume that your equipment, your software hardware is manufactured here in the United States. How serious of a threat is the competition from abroad, particularly the Japanese, uh, as far as the marketplace is concerned? Well, the Japanese have done very well in, in high technology, mass volume type of products. To date, they have not had a significant impact on the personal computer market. It is a market that they're very interested in, and I believe it uh, behooves all American companies to uh, keep very aware of uh, what the Japanese are doing, and uh, I believe we can continue to be competitive in that market. I see. I want to touch again, I want to return back to the security aspect. Uh, I might have a fear as an employer, as a purchaser of one of my personal computers or a home computer or a small business computer, that my employees might be able to tap into some confidential information. Uh, what safeguards, I know we touched that, but I'd like to go a little more into detail. What safeguards can you offer me to make sure that doesn't happen? Well, it turns out a personal computer is much better that way than a large mainframe com computer or the conventional central computer in or an organization. The reason for that is you can actually have physical security of the computer system. Namely, the computer can be in a room and locked and simply not have access to it, and it's not tied in with the main system. With a central computer, you always have the worry that data is stored out there somewhere, and you really don't know if a person might have access to it or not. Okay. And again, uh, returning to this subject, getting our dollars worth. If I'm spending money, my hard-earned money, I want to make sure I'm getting the most for it. Uh, there's Radio Shack, of course. Uh, almost a department store of computer items, and they're, they're, those computer stores are popping up throughout the country where I have a broad range. I, how do you determine that I'm truly getting my dollar's worth, uh, and that I'm not paying for a name, or I'm not paying for a nice shell, or I'm not paying for advertising? Uh, how do you really determine the dollar's worth of that equipment? Well, the first thing you have to do is simply say, what do I want to do with that equipment? Uh, what is my application? Is it an inventory? Is it a mailing list? Is it word processing? And what is it costing me to do it now? What will it cost when I automate that? And very often you will see that the savings that you can make in your organization are very much greater than, than the cost of the equipment. Uh, briefly, uh, the economy's in hard times, the recession. How is the recession hurting your industry right now? It turns out that the computer industry in, in general uh, is an industry that is not affected by the recession as much as other industries. The reason being, computers go to aiding productivity in businesses. And very often in a recession, people look very hard at their businesses and say, how can we increase productivity? And one answer is to buy a computer. With that, we bid you goodbye and thank you. We've been speaking with Dr. Harry Garland of Cromenco Incorporated, a company based in California that manufactures computers. Uh, we have to break away now to the newsroom with John Darren. Stay with us.